My role was really not to, uh, he didn't consult me with respect to advice. He did his own planning and so forth. But uh, he wanted me to, to help him on uh, evidentiary matters. Reich's crystal knocked, his, his uh, Gehring's involvement in that and in the, uh, and in the uh, Stalag, uh, uh, Stalag Loop 6 and uh, these more specific crimes that we, he wanted me to get that type of evidence for him. Uh, but Justice Jackson had conceived his own plan uh, of, uh, of uh, design of cross-examination of Herman Gary. You know, Justice Jackson didn't, uh, he wasn't uh, dependent upon the members of his staff. Justice Jackson was an extremely able, capable lawyer. He, he knew what he was doing. He, he didn't have to ask anybody else, he laid out his own plans. And he had uh, devised an extremely uh, significant and he, I thought a beautiful plan for the cross-examination of Herman Gary, which didn't work out quite as we had planned. What was the plan? The plan was to develop through the testimony of the number two uh, leader of Nazi Germany just how uh, the conspiracy, the Nazi conspiracy developed and how uh, these uh, leaders had taken away the freedoms of the German people and, and brought them into, uh, under their own control and uh, carried out their aggressive designs. He wanted to prove the conspiracy count. That was the big thing against Hermann Goering. Uh, uh, now, we had plenty of other uh, material that we could use against Gehring, which we, which we did use, and, and we had to fall back upon very much because the grand plan did not come off quite as effectively as, uh, as Justice Jackson uh, had hoped and expected. So he sought to establish how dictatorships come into being and the harm they can perpetuate through the cross-examination of this chief uh, witness of the Nazi regime. And so he started out uh, right away by uh, pointing out, uh, asking Gary, well now Gary, uh, uh, you want to get the, 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 you want to eliminate opposition and you want to uh, be sure you gain the full support of the people. So what's one of the first things you did in Prussia? He was the head of, uh, Gehring was the head of uh, the Prussian government. You established a secret state police. And this secret police goes out and it can apprehend uh, individuals uh, who are uh, perhaps opposed to or not fully supportive of uh, the uh, uh, designs of the leaders of the state now, the, the dictatorial people. And uh, so you established a secret state police. And did you do this in Prussia, uh, Herman Gehring? Well, now, yes, I did. Uh, we did establish it. But now you, uh, you have police uh, uh, in every country. And some of them are secret and some are not. And uh, uh, in the United States, I'm sure that uh, you've got uh, problems with the police. And, uh, so, and Gary would go on like this for, for five minutes. This completely frustrated uh, Jackson's design for a, a cross-examination of this witness because he needed to have affirmative responses. And of course, if Goering wanted to say something in addition, well, that's his right. But, uh, but Goering would be evasive and, uh, and he, then he would expound and uh, enlarge upon his answers and then he would try to uh, throw them back on things. Uh, Things that he said happened in the United States or Great Britain or so. So this is why that part of the cross-examination did not come off very well. 
and uh, uh, Jackson had his plan, and uh, Garing was frustrating it. So Jackson did ask uh, uh, Lord Lawrence if he would please instruct the witness to answer the questions, yes or no, and then he can make an explanation. Or he said it would be better if he made a f f complete explanation in his uh, uh, when he when his uh, uh, you know, on his. Uh, uh, exam direct examination by his own defense counsel. And Lawrence wouldn't do it. Because this is a tradition of Anglo-American uh, uh, legal, uh, legal trials. If you ask a witness, you, too bad. The witness can answer what he wants. It's, if it's reasonably responsive, that's the way we operate. So uh, that is what caused the press to get to give a rather un, uh, flattering appraisal of Justice Jackson's initial examination of, of, uh, of Gary. Were you brought in at all kind of on a staff saying, all right, what can we do better tomorrow? Yes, I was. And uh, and uh, he, he uh, uh, Justice Jackson asked me to try to dig up some <laughs> uh, material that we could hit him with, and, uh, and that was not easy to do. But I did but the best I could. Yeah, he did discuss it with me. And looking back at this now, uh, Justice Jackson had a wonderful idea. And it was it was very difficult, but but it could be, have been pulled off all right to prove the conspiracy, not only the conspiracy through uh, uh, Herman Goering, but uh, to demonstrate to the world how a uh, dictatorship functions and how men can get in power. Uh, in a democratic country, how they can subvert democracy into fascism. But what we should have done is to have hit Gary with the specific charges at the beginning. Uh, for example, on Kristallnacht, uh, they, they had the meeting after, after Kristallnacht, and uh, uh, the, uh, the Garing came up with this uh, horrible idea that uh, having beaten up on the Jewish people, uh, uh, they would simply impose a fine of a billion, a billion Reichsmarks so that the insurance companies would have to pay the money not to the Jews whose, whose were homes were demolished and properties destroyed and so forth, but, but to pay it to the state. And uh, that was that was Gehring's great idea. Uh, so we should have gone into that. And in that, in that, con in that uh, uh, conference, uh, Gehring summed the whole thing up, uh, as you recall, by the end, uh, saying, I would hate to be a Jew in Germany today. This is 1938. Now, we should have, we, that's where we should have started. And then we got, a, got into Stalag Luft 6, where, uh, you know, the uh, British uh, flyers were uh, recaptured and shot. And this is a terrible thing for an airman like Gary. So we hit him with those things. That's what we hit him with later on. But we should have hit him with those things first. Now, now Gary. This is what happens in a dictatorial regime, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. And then we'll say, well, now, isn't it a fact that as soon as you got into power, you established a secret police in Prussia? Are you with the head? You know, by this time, Gehring is broken. But see, we didn't do it that way. 
we ask those questions first. Now, Gehring is strong. Uh, he does. He's not uh, concerned about uh, uh, what's going to happen to him at that point. And he comes back and says, "Well, yeah, of course I established a police. We, we call it the secret police. It's not much different from the police you have in in, uh, in New York. I see the police. Uh, they beat up a bunch of people yesterday. I see the paper." in New York City, so what are you talking about? So you learn from experience. But what this doesn't take away from, from Justice Jackson's a genius at conceiving the proper way of going about this and uh, trying to establish through this key witness uh, the evils of, uh, of, uh, of uh, tyranny. 